over the past year, I've watched my YouTube channel grow from 75 subscribers all the way up to 1,300. My channel got monetized, the whole deal. It's been a really fun ride where I've learned a lot. And one thing that's helped me along the way, if you can believe it, is my full-time job. So I'm a musician in New York City. As a matter of fact, I'm a worship pastor or a music director at a church full time. That's the music portion of my intro that I say at the beginning of almost every single video. Did I do my intro yet? I don't know if I did my intro yet. Hey everybody, my name is Patrick. I am a human, a husband, a dad, and a musician living in New York City. And on this channel, we talk about all of it. Anyway, so like many other churches and organizations, we have really great video and audio gear laying around that we use for live streaming and also really fun artistic projects. And I'm the one that's responsible for all that gear. So if I have some downtime or if I wanna come into the office on a weekend and grab one of those cameras and shoot what I hope will be a good sounding and good looking video, that's completely available to me. I'm so thankful for that. Thank you. However, there comes a point where you need to be a grown up and start playing with your own toys. Which is where this box comes into play. Oh, what's in the box? Let's get into it. I'm just now walking home. Today is a very exciting day. Hey Mitchell, can I grab packages for me? Oh, thank you, sir. How's it going, buddy? What up, my guy? Hey, why are you filming me? So I've always had really nice gear laying around when it comes to audio, really great audio interfaces, guitars, microphones, things like that. But when it comes to cameras, I've either borrowed really nice cameras like I mentioned before, or used one of my GoPros like I'm using now, or even my iPhone, which some YouTube channels still use those cameras and make better looking videos than I could ever begin to imagine. And I don't know how they do it, but I wanted to move a little bit further beyond the iPhone and the GoPro when it comes to functionality and video in general. So I decided to pick up the Sony ZV-E10. Now, this is the older sibling to the Sony ZV-1. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I am not a camera pro. But after doing a ton of research, I found that this is one of the best solutions for YouTubers, streamers, and people who kind of need an all-encompassing video camera for content creation. But I ran into a problem. You see, this camera was extremely difficult to find. And when it finally came time for me to bite the bullet and make the purchase, I went to B&H and it said, you're gonna have to wait four to six months before this camera is in stock. And that's because there's a worldwide chip shortage that's making electronic gear harder to make and produce and get out to people as quick as possible. But I just kind of said, okay, that's it. I, I resigned myself to the fact that like, I'm either going to have to spend about $1,400 or $1,200 on a used model on eBay. Yes, people are re really capitalizing on this camera shortage, or I'm just gonna have to wait my turn. And then one day I went to Best Buy, I refreshed the page and this was available. Now, when you purchase this camera, it can come with a ton of different accessories, but one that you have to be ready to purchase is a lens because these cameras, what makes them better or a little bit more advanced than the ZV-1 is that these cameras have an interchangeable lens. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't know a ton about lenses, but I decided to buy the standard kit lens that comes with the ZV-E10 because after doing some research and watching some videos where this lens was used, it looked great. And I said, hey, I'm getting started. I know I can always upgrade this later because of the interchangeable lens feature of the ZV-E10. So I went ahead and went with the kit or standard lens because I like the way it looked and I can always upgrade later. But let me put this thing right back on. And as I'm putting this, uh, this back on, one thing you will notice is that, yeah, this lens here comes with a little lens cap, but when I pulled the lens off of the ZV-E10, it does not have a cap for the body of the camera. That's some... Stop. I have a timer going for the crock pot. 
so. This camera body does not come with a cap to protect it from dust and things like that if you ever take a lens off and don't put another one immediately back on. So that's something you can just hop on Amazon and buy. It's just gonna be a few dollars. But let's talk about what does come with this camera. So as you can see, when I open the box, obviously I get a few things. Um, I have the camera body, the Sony ZV-E10. I also have the lens, the 16 to 55 milliliter lens, the, the kit lens that I decided to purchase uh, with the camera and when you open the box these two items are attached which terrified me because I don't know if I'd want to travel with a camera where the lens was attached I think that could just cause problems down the road but whatever it is what it is it did not come with a an SD card or a memory card or what you use to store the footage you're capturing so you're definitely gonna need to purchase that it came with a small strap that you can use to obviously hold the camera around your shoulder if you're vlogging or, or running around on, on a family trip at like, you know, Disney and shooting video of the kids. Also came with tons of documentation, of course, for registration and things like that. And then it also came with this miniature, it also came with this miniature little dead cat here, this little uh, uh, wind noise uh, suppressor. So if you're shooting outside, and I'm gonna talk about this in a future video, um, I would want to go with like a bit of a better mic, like the like the Rode um, uh, Video uh, Micro here, which has this huge dead cat on it. So the wind hits it, dies down massively before even coming close to the microphone. These are obviously removable. If you're in a studio that's treated for sound and you don't have to worry about uh, tons of extra noise coming in, you can just throw this right on your camera. And the way these things attach to the camera is by using these this mount here. And this is a cold shoe mount. Well, actually it's a hot shoe mount and a cold shoe mount, but regardless, these little mounts here can attach lights, microphones, and all sorts of accessories. But inside the box, this little dead cat here comes ready to be used. You just slide it in and it covers the microphone. Let me pull that off again. It covers the microphone that's on top of the ZV-E10. Now, in a minute, you guys are gonna hear uh, how this sounds, uh, but for now, I just kinda wanted to show you how to attach that little dead cat. Apart from this little strap here and you know the lens and, uh, the, the lens and body itself and this little dead cat here, there's not a ton that's going to be in the box of the ZV-E10. And that means that you're gonna have to go out and buy some accessories, which we are gonna talk about in a completely different video. For now, I just want to show you what this camera looks like. But before I do, why did I go for the ZV-E10? Well, there's a couple of different reasons. Number one, I went online, I watched people use the device and the image was great. Even the audio quality off the built-in microphone was great. Um, I, I was really, really happy with it. It also has this screen that pops out like this that can turn right towards you while you're shooting so you can clearly see what you're doing. As a matter of fact, when you're recording on this camera, it also shows a big red square. Rectangle? Square? I think it's a rectangle. Shapes. When you're recording, it shows this big red rectangle on the screen so that you always know, hey, I'm going, I'm shooting, I'm recording. You don't have to go to the back of the camera and be like, is there a red light on somewhere? It clearly shows you right on the screen. I love that pop out screen. Again, interchangeable lens, huge thing for the future as lenses come out that can, be, that can work with this camera. I can remove whatever I want and attach whatever I want. You can plug in any microphone to this camera and this little port here. And then on the other side of the device, nope, not on the other side, I'm still learning. Additionally, if you look at this little door here, I'm just gonna use that to pop it open. There's all sorts of other connections for this camera. And some of them are very important to me. Number one, we have a mini HDMI port, you know, sending this out to a projector or a TV to show people what you've been shooting, or even a, a monitor that you could, like a big, big, big monitor that you could mount to the top of this thing or somewhere else, totally possible. You also see a headphone connection here. So if I'm shooting maybe a wedding and I wanna make sure that the audio coming in sounds great, I'm shooting like this, headphones are right on me. I've, maybe I've got it on a gimbal, I'm hearing what's coming in. But there's also a USB-C port. Now this USB-C port is not just for charging the camera. Speaking of charging, this does come 
with a tiny little battery here, buy extra batteries, or make sure you buy an external power supply that plugs in that is continuous power so that if you're shooting a video like this where you know the camera's not moving around, it's gonna be really, really helpful to have continuous power so you don't have to keep switching out batteries. Again, that'll be talked about in the accessories video. That USB-C port is not just for charging. Out of the box, and this has been a huge headache for streamers and people who are using higher definition cameras for video conferencing. Out of the box, the USB-C port that you see here for charging can also be used as a webcam connection. Right out of the box, this can mount onto your desk, mount behind your computer or in front of your computer, depending on how you look at it, and can be seen as a video conferencing it can be seen as a video conferencing camera for QuickTime, for Ecamm e e Live, for Zoom, for almost any app that you're using. That's huge. So inside of this small little device, which was about 800 bucks for both the body and the lens, not only do I have a really great camera where I can actually uh, uh, shoot great content for my YouTube channel, but when it's time to hop on that Zoom call and stream with a few friends, or um, it's time to hop on that Zoom call and have an important meeting where you really wanna level up your literal image, this becomes your webcam right out of the box, no extra hardware or software needed. So those are some of the huge selling points for me, but what does this thing look like? I have not yet turned this camera on to truly film anything, and I'm about to do that for the first time right here with you. So stay with me because I need to grab a tripod. So it's time for me to debut my new Sony ZV-E10. So I have to say that right out of the box, I'm loving the accessories that are available. I'm loving how easy this thing is to learn how to use, to manipulate, to manage. Um, but all of that doesn't matter if it doesn't look good. So I'm gonna say this, in a, in a second, we're about to switch over to my first ever recorded video with the Sony ZV-E10, and I haven't changed a thing. There's gonna be another video that I come out with very, very soon where I talk about all the settings you should make before you shoot video regularly with your ZV-E10, but this is just first impressions. So let's see how this thing looks. In three, two, one, this is the Sony ZV-E10. Now, I don't hate the image that a GoPro produces, but I have to say that I like this a lot better. But what do you think? I mean, is it crispy? Is it good looking? Again, there are a ton of features on this camera that out of the box I would change, and I'm going to change, and I'm gonna talk about those in a different video, so stay tuned. But I have to say that I'm only seeing the, the uh, screen here where my image is, you know, it's kind of showing me that preview. I'm seeing the red rectangle around the screen, making sure I know that I'm recording. I haven't added an external mic to this. I don't even have the dead cat on top of this guy to cut down on wind noise. This is just straight out of the box. And I have to say, I'm loving the way this looks. So I have to say that I'm just really, really excited. I know a ton of you out there are YouTubers and you're thinking, yeah, Patrick, duh, we have cameras, that's what we do. But this is my first real camera, in my opinion, that I've ever purchased beyond a GoPro or an iPhone or using a borrowed camera uh, from someone else. And I'm so excited to dive deeper and deeper into what this camera does. But what do you think? Are you interested in buying the Sony ZV-E10? Have you been able to find it for sale anywhere on any site in any store? Let us know down in the comments, or maybe you have questions about the camera. Feel free to let me know. I'm just gonna keep diving into this thing and learning more and I can't wait to share that journey with you. So dive into the comments, let me know your thoughts and then do all the other YouTube things. Like this video, share this video, subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in the next one with my Sony ZV-E10.